Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Human Reproduction. Today we will learn Oogenesis. The formation of a mature female gamete is called a Oogenesis. When we learned about sperm formation, that was called spermatogenesis, which starts at the stage of puberty. Whereas when it comes to Oogenesis, it begins when the female girl is in the womb of the mother. That means in the embryonic stage of the girl child, the process starts. So within the ovary, we know ovarian stroma is there and ovary is covered by a germinal epithelium. So the germinal layer has got many gamete mother cells. Here the gamete mother cells are called a oogonia. What is the ploidy of oogonia? It is diploid. Okay, so these cells undergo mitosis, continuous mitosis to increase their number and finally in each ovary about 2 million oogonia will form. But after that there is no formation happening. It's only one time process in the embryonic stage after birth new oogonia are added. So here oogenesis can be divided into three phases. First phase is called a multiplication phase, second is a growth phase. Third is a maturation phase. So here we can say it is the uh, multiplication phase that is happening prior to the birth of the baby girl. We will see what is happening during oogenesis that is multiplication phase. The oogonia will undergo division. So you know oogonia being the mother cell what type of division it will be undergoing? Meiosis right. So it will enter into meiosis and you know that meiosis has got two stages meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In that meiosis 1, prophase stage is a very long stage with the five different substages. If you remember, leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, diplotin and diakinesis. And in this case, the cell will get arrested after prophase 1. And now we call that cell as primary oocyte. This is called a primary oocyte. Now can you tell the ploidy of primary oocyte? It is still deployed because the meiosis 1 itself is not complete, only prophase is complete, prophase 1. Now what happens to this primary oocyte? This primary oocyte will accumulate some granulosa cells around it to form a structure called a primary follicle. Suppose this is the granulosa layer, then this structure is called a primary, this is the way to write primary, primary follicle. Okay. So now you have to remember the cell inside is still the primary oocyte but the entire structure is called the primary follicle with the granulosa layer. So here is a space where the baby girl is born. So once a baby girl is born till she reaches her puberty no more oogonia will be added as I mentioned but many of these primary follicles will degenerate and when she reaches the puberty stage only 60,000 to 80,000 follicles only will be there left in her ovaries. So this stage is the from birth till her puberty. Okay. At the puberty stage she starts menstruating and the first menstruation is called a menarche. Okay. So once she attains that menarche after that every month the cycle repeats. So menstrual cycle is around 28 to 29 days. So every month a cyclical change is happening within her ovary and uterus so that this primary follicle will develop. Okay. So this primary follicle now once she owns the after the onset of the menarche the primary follicle will now develop into the next stage called a secondary follicle. But not all primary follicle, every month a few, six or eight primary follicles will start developing but only one will reach the final maturity stage before that other will die off. Okay. So here a primary follicle will become a secondary follicle. So during that stage what is happening? It will accumulate more granulosa layer. So, this was a primary follicle, it attains more granulosa to form the secondary follicle but at this time it develops a membrane outside also. This membrane is called a theca. 
So, this is called a secondary fork. But what is there still inside? The primary oocyte. Now, the secondary follicle now matures into the next stage called the tertiary follicle. So, tertiary follicle, how is it becoming? A few more changes are happening. That is, more granulosa layer will form. The layer outside will differentiate into two layers, outer and the inner layers. See the outer layer is called theca externa and inner layer is called theca interna. And what is still inside? The primary oocyte. But here another stage happens that is a fluid filled cavity forms inside this. This fluid filled cavity is called an antrum. So, antrum is a characteristic feature of tertiary follicle. So, primary follicle to secondary follicle, only the differences are more granulosa layer and a thicker layer. Now, from secondary to tertiary follicle, more granulosa. Theca differentiates into theca interna and theca externa and also a fluid filled cavity called the andrum will form. Now this tertiary follicle will complete meiosis 1 because it was arrested here at prophase 1. Now it will complete metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1 resulting in two cells. So here along with this cell what will form? Two daughter cells are forming like meiosis but it is a highly unequal division. Why? Because the one cell will retain most of the cytoplasm whereas the other cell is simply a mere nucleus without any cytoplasm around it. So this one is called a first polar body and the other cell is called a secondary oocyte. So, remember primary oocyte was formed in the embryonic stage till it becomes tertiary follicle. It was primary oocyte only though the follicular structure is changing. But now primary oocyte underwent uh, meiosis 1, completed meiosis 1 to form secondary oocyte and a first polar body. So, sometimes a first polar body may degenerate or it will divide the, or complete meiosis later, I will mention later and form two polar body again. So, in this case, this secondary oocyte now we are focusing on, first polar body we are assuming it is degenerating. So, what is inside the secondary oocyte? This is the secondary oocyte. So, what is the ploidy of secondary oocyte? It is haploid because it is formed after the meiosis 1. So, it is completely uh, meiosis 1 is over. So, chromosome number became half. Now, it has got a layer here, outside layer. The secondary oocyte is forming an outermost layer. That layer is called a zona pellucida. Now we will see what happens to this tertiary follicle. Now the tertiary follicle turns into a mature graphene follicle. Here only the size is becoming bigger. So this is the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte has got a membrane called a zona pellucida. And now the andron becomes larger so that the follicular cell is only surrounding this and form a germ hill and it comes to the outer part. This structure is the andrums. Andrum is becoming larger which was smaller here and then what is outside our theca layers are there. So now outside this secondary oocyte, this is the secondary oocyte, outside that zona pellucida layer, around that what is there? The cells of 
follicle, granulosa cells are there. So that will form a structure called a corona radiata. So this layer is forming corona radiata. Okay. This happens almost at the middle of the menstrual cycle. That means if the menstrual cycle is, on, uh, is 28 day cycle, then it happens around 14th day. Now, during that time, a hormone called LH will be at its peak. As a result, the graphene follicle ruptures and releasing the secondary oocyte out. So, that process is called a ovulation. Release of secondary oocyte outside the graphene follicle is called a what? The ovulation process which is happening in the middle of the menstrual cycle. Now, the secondary oocyte is coming out and the secondary oocyte is actually uh, after forming this, it enters into the meiosis 2 that is prophase 2 will happen, metaphase stage it gets arrested. Then it enters into a second resting period because first resting period started after forming primary follicle in the embryonic stage. Now again second resting stage for this secondary oocyte. Now it will go to the fallopian tube and it reaches the ampulla region. We learned the female reproductive system structure last video. You can refer to that. It reaches the ampulla region and waits there for the fertilization to happen. During that time, if an intercourse or a copulation happens, the sperm presence will be there. In that case, the sperm will fertilize the ovum. Is the meiosis too complete? No. Only after fertilization, when the sperm enters, this secondary oocyte will complete its meiosis. Once the sperm fertilizes the ovum, meiosis 2 will complete, resulting again in two cells, again an equal division leading to a larger ooted and a small second polar body. At this time, if the primary polar body exists or the first polar body exists, it will also divide to form two polar body. So once the meiosis completes, how many polar body may be there? Three polar body and one rooted. Okay, that you have to see the option given. One rooted and three polar body if given, that is the correct answer. Otherwise, one polar body and one rooted because first polar body degenerates means only one will be there. Okay, so this is the structure. Now, I will recap this. Uh, it, at the embryonic stage, the fetal ovary produces many ugonia by my, mitotic division. After that, the ugonia cell will enter into prophase 1 of meiosis 1 and gets arrested. And that cell is called a primary oocyte. Primary oocyte develops a granulosa layer to form primary follicle. Then after that, no more follicles are added. After birth, many of them degenerate and finally only 60,000 to 80,000 will be remaining. During the menstrual cycle, the further process or follicle development happens by the influence of a hormone called the follicular stimulating hormone. So during that time, this primary follicle will develop into secondary follicle where a covering or the theca will form. Then the secondary follicle will become tertiary follicle by differentiating theca into external and internal layer and also forming a fluid filled cavity called the antrum. At this tertiary stage, the primary oocyte inside will complete meiosis 1 to form a first polar body and secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte develops a layer called the zona pellucida. Then the tertiary follicle matures into a graphene follicle where the antrum becomes larger, the overall size increases and also uh, their form. This is called a germ hill. The middle of the menstrual cycle, the graphene follicle ruptures to release a secondary oocyte out. The secondary oocyte has got two layering that is zona pellucida and a corona radiata made up of follicular cells. Now this will go to the fallopian tube. The, it will complete meiosis too only if fertilization happens. We will see the structure of ovum now. Ovum uh, consists of the cell which is having the cytoplasm and nucleus surrounded by a plasma membrane. And outer to that there is a layer called a zona pellucida. In between the plasma membrane and zona pellucida there is a small space called a perivitelline space. Around that the follicular cells will form a structure called a corona radiator. The corona radiator follicular cells are held together by an, enzyme, an acid called a hyaluronic acid. This has got two poles. The, this pole is called the animal pole and the other pole is called the vegetable pole. Sperm always enters through the animal pole.
Hope you understood the process of oogenesis well. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.